all things yeah, through Christ yeah, that strengthens us. Yeah, you got to right. Yeah, the Bible says yeah, God is yeah, our refuge. Yeah, Somebody so shout glory. He's the God of comfort, huh? the God of your situation, huh? God over your trouble, huh? God over your mess, huh? everything you go through, huh? God understands how not huh? put you through my it. hope, amen, is based huh? on my relationship huh? with a God that I know huh? that saved my soul. Huh? Somebody shout glory. So if you return with me to uh, the book of 1 Peter chapter 2. It's a very familiar passage. Man, I promise to get you out of here so you can make it to the fair tonight. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two and verse nine. First Peter chapter two and verse nine. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life, words on the wings of the morning, the dark nights will fade away, speak to my heart. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning. The dark nights will fade away. Speak to my heart. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. My God, my Savior, and my friend, Lord, we thank you on this morning for being able to come into your house. We thank you, O oh God, for your visitation already, your spirit that is felt, your anointing that walks up and down each hour, your love that we feel, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, before we ask or do anything on today. Lord, but we come to you as a frail vessel, O oh God, doing nothing of ourselves but only through the strength of you. Now, O oh God, trouble every heart, O oh God. Lord, trouble the water, O oh God. Lord, that the words, the seeds of our mouth will be planted into the hearts of your people. That it will produce fruit, O oh God, a thousandfold in our lives. And Lord, we will thank you and we will praise you. We will thank you with our mouths and we will praise you with our hands. We will thank you with our mouths and we will praise you with our hands. We will thank you with our mouths and we will praise you with our hands. We will thank you with our mouth and we will praise you with our hands. In Jesus' name, amen. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. A student in architecture entered a nationwide contest for building designs. Judged by a panel of judges, this individual went to this contest expecting to get a prize. Judged by a panel of architects or designed to receive honorable mention. She was utterly 
depressed. She believed hers was the best design there. At lunch, on the last day of this convention, she was sitting over her uneaten sandwich looking at her creation. An old man was looking at it too. At last he remarked, not knowing who had designed the building. This one, I think, is the best one of them all. Judges had merely given her work an honorable mention, but one old man had liked it. The young student went home elated. Why? Because the old man was Frank Lloyd Wright, probably the greatest architect of all time. When the authority tells us something, we can count on it. God is the authority of who we are. He is our creator. He gives us the correct information. He is the one we should be listening to about who we are. Peter in the first chapter says what God has done for us in chapter 2. He talks about what God says about as believers in Jesus Christ. He informs us of who we are. This morning I want to talk about I am different. I am different. You all can put it in the atmosphere and say, I am the exception. Repeat after me and say, I am the exception. You're wondering how being different plays into a part in a message on a Sunday morning. But I am different. They come out with this rap song, I'm different, I'm different. I know the young people know it, but my brother and sister, I'm different. We can look over the course of history and understand even being ones who have grown up from childhood, everyone has struggled with the whole uh, problem of wanting to be like other people, trying to fit in to the select groups trying to have friendships and companions and trying to be the most liked in the school or the most appreciated at work, the, the one that has the best goals, the best ideas, the, the, the best of everything. But my brother and my sister, oftentimes when we get so caught up in trying to fit in to what everyone else is doing, we miss out on our particular purpose and our particular goals that God has for us in our life. Oftentimes when you try to go with the crowd, you miss your identity. You miss your purpose. You miss what God has called you to do. And too many times we get caught up in trying to be with the who's who and trying to keep up with the Joneses and trying to have the latest shoes and trying to have the, the clothes and trying to have all of the things that individuals in our select group have. We try to look at uh, 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 the, the, the girls of Atlanta. I know it's the housewives, but ain't none of them wives up to anybody. But, but we try to keep up with them. We, we, we try to keep up to the Las Vegas and the L.A. women. Again, ain't none of them married to nobody, but they identify themselves as wives. But oftentimes we look at what they have. They look, we look at their fingernails. We look at their shoes. We look at their hair. And, and, and something about what they have causes us to want to be like them. It's something down on the inside that causes us to want to reach for something greater than, than where we are, something greater than what we have. But my brothers and sisters, it's not that God doesn't want you to have it, but he wants you to have what he wants you to have. He want to give you the greatest. He want to bless you with the best. He want to bless you with the, the abundance of the things that he has because the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. But you have to go to him to get what it is he has for you. All too often, we try to do it all ourselves. All too often, we try to lean onto our own understanding. But that's not what the Bible says to us. It tells us to lean on the Lord. Tells us to go to him, to trust in him, to, to just go to him and ask of him what we need. 
I am reminded of the story of Abraham. Abraham also being another individual in the Bible that we can identify as being different. Being different and called out from his family. Being different because God saw something in him that he wanted to use. Not because he was perfect, not because he was upstanding, not because he had it all together, but he was a vessel that God wanted to use. That being said, God called him out. Making him to understand, Abraham, you will be different. Abraham, you will be the father of many nations. You will be the father of many people. You will be the father of faith. Isn't it interesting God would call him a father and yet he didn't have a child. He didn't have a seed. He didn't have someone that would take over and be able to stand in the gap uh, to continue on the generation. But what I love about God is God will call out of you what you don't even see yourself. It's, it's hidden deep down on the inside, but God would call it out of you. He will see the things that we can't see and cause the things that we don't know to manifest. And, and if we allow him to, he'll work a work in us that, that will allow us to be where God wants us to be. I love it because Abraham was continuing the walk that God had first called his father Terah to. God had called Terah to leave his people. But Terah decided to be able to, to reside in Haran. But Abraham said, Lord, wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. My brothers and sisters, we have to have the mindset of being able to tell God, yes. Yes, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. Lord, whatever you tell me to go, I'll go. However high the mountain is, Lord, I'll climb. No matter how deep the valley is, I'll go. But oftentimes we look at the circumstances that are in front of us and we find ourselves saying, no, everybody else isn't doing it, so, you know, we'll fold into the group of everyone else. But then that reminds me of a prophet called Micaiah. Micaiah being in the book of Kings was another individual who decided to stand alone. Decided to stand alone even because of, of his imprisonment. Even, even facing the fact of knowing that he was not liked by the king. He wasn't appreciated for his honesty. He wasn't appreciated for his relationship with God. But even in the time when Jehoshaphat came to King Ahab and said, King Ahab, do you have a prophet that we can seek and go to to seek the Lord. Ahab said, well, I have prophets. He brought five, 400 prophets to the king Jehoshaphat, and they all prophesied in the positive nature. They, 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 they told him to go up and to take on the land. But the interesting thing about this, Jehoshaphat being yet connected to God, saying like, okay, I, I, I hear you, you got these prophets. I hear all 400 of them, but is there yet one? God is saying this morning, is there yet one? Jehoshaphat said, okay, who is this prophet? He said, Micaiah, but he never prophesies anything good. Never has anything good to say. He never, he never comes up with anything positive. Cut these fans off up here. He never, he never even provides anything positive so, so that way I can work with it. You know, it's interesting because... Micaiah understood even being in prison, even though I had 400 people against me, I decided that I'll stand alone. My brothers and sisters, until you get to the, the, the point of you will have backbone in your God to know that if you have to stand alone, you will stand alone and be able to tell the truth, shame the devil, and be able to give God some praise. But the interesting thing is, when he called Micaiah, Micaiah was told, hey, just give the king what he wants. Go ahead and tell him what he wants to hear. So when he came before Ahab and Jehoshaphat, he said, what say ye what we to do? He said, will you go ahead and go up? And Ahab said, wait a minute. You never prophesy anything good. You never tell me anything positive. Why do you tell me something positive now? Micaiah said unto him, and I'm going to paraphrase, well, you didn't listen to me before. You didn't want to adhere to what God wanted to say then. 
So why am I going to tell you what God said when you want to hear what you want to hear? So he told him what he wanted to hear and then he told him what God said. If you go up, you do what you're going to do, there's still going to yet be judgment upon you. And so here we are at this place, at this juncture of trying to understand what being different means. I know growing up for me, I started in ministry at the age of 14. I got saved and it was difficult because I, I, was, I was young enough to hang with my friends and yet they didn't want to hang with me because I was preaching. Yet at the same time as I was preaching, the, the people that was also preaching could, could, could have been my grandfather, so I couldn't hang with them. So I was left in this, this conundrum whereby I, I couldn't hang and chill with my friends, but I couldn't hang and chill with the individuals in ministry. So I had to stand alone. I had to be different. I had to be the trailblazer. I had to be the one that was going to be different and be the example for the people. <clears throat> so when we look at what we're getting ready to embark upon this week, this month, talking about the Heavenly Health Club. Don't you understand that it is interesting enough that many of us started off this year with health goals? I'm sure everybody had about five or ten pounds they wanted to lose. I'm sure everybody wanted to start walking and doing sit-ups and start doing some curls and start going to the gym and somewhere around the second or third week of January those thoughts and ideas just went out the window. Somewhere along February you said you know what I'll pick it back up and and I'll try and do a little running. You go running for about five minutes one day and you say oh no it's too hard and so I'm gonna let that go. So then you try to go the other route and you try to say, okay, I'll just eat a little better. You decide, well, I'll just eat a little better this week. And so you, you go to work with a, a, a tray full of carrots and celery and you eat one half of a carrot and possibly a bite of a celery. You say, oh, no, this ain't going to work. Somehow that day you found yourselves in Wendy's or Burger King's drive and you decide, oh, no, that's not going to work. But my brothers and sisters, all too often we do our spiritual lives the same way. We decide that we're going to get closer to God in the beginning of the year and somewhere in between now and then we find ourselves caught up in the worries of life. We're caught up in the things that's going on. We're caught up in our families. We're caught up in our jobs. We're caught up in school. We're caught up with kids. We're caught up in relationships. We're caught up into everything but what we said we were going to be caught up in. God is saying here in the third quarter, in the second month, at the first Sunday of August, to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, he still has not forgotten about the goals, the, the, the ideas, the dreams that he had placed inside of you the start of 2016. He has not forgotten what he wants to work in your life. He hasn't forgotten about what he wants to do for you. But my brothers and sisters, what he's waiting for, what he's expecting is for you to take the first step. Come on and give God a hand, pray. But oftentimes we have to get past ourselves. And so we have to stand up and be able to be counted as worthy as what God wants us to be worthy of. I love being different because I can look throughout the Bible and find individuals that were different. I can look at the different guys that... That's Joseph and David and uh, M Methuselah who was, you know, so old. We can, we can look at uh, 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 Micaiah. We can look at Hezekiah. We can look at Zedekiah, Zechariah, and all these other individuals who had something different about them that the Bible identifies. But we can also look at uh, 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 Deborah. We can look at uh, Sarah. We can look at Rebecca. We can, so you can't can't sit up there and say whether you're male or female that you can't identify with someone different in the word of God. But if you can't find someone that you can identify with, someone that you can uh, be able to say, I, I, I want to be like them, I, I want to get closer to them. If you can't find someone in the Old Testament, 
Someone that you can, can identify with, who's been through your struggle, who's been through the hurts, who's been through the pains. Let me tell you about a man in the New Testament. Somebody who walked through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Somebody who walked through 42 generations. Somebody who came through a virgin birth. Somebody who we know. Somebody who we can identify with. Somebody who is so wonderful and so kind. Who was born in a manger and who yet even though he was a child he was subject to to his parents somebody who was wonderful and a wonderful counselor somebody who will listen to all your troubles somebody who is acquainted with all your griefs somebody who, who knows all your hurt and your pain somebody who went to that rugged cross somebody who carried the weight of your sin carried the weight of your problems carried the weight of your sorrow he's acquainted with all your grief that man that name is Jesus Jesus he's so wonderful he's the one who went to the cross for you he's the one who died for your sins he's the one who hung on the cross they nailed him to the cross nailed his hands nailed his feet they didn't they didn't they didn't even hold back anything when they with him they whooped him all night long they put a crown of thorns on his head yes they did you can't be in a place where you can't identify with the Lord and Savior but you can identify with him on today because he says to us all ye that are heavy laden I'll give you rest take upon me my yoke because my yoke is easy and my burden is light my brothers and sisters that's why I'm glad to be different because God blesses those who are different he blesses those who choose to be different he blesses those who decide to step out the box he decides to give them strength for those who don't want to be like everyone else he decides to give the person power who decides to walk upon serpents yes I'm different yes I work with all my people but I'm not like the people I'll be honest when they're dishonest I'll be loving when they're not loving I'll be fair when they are not fair because I have a savior who was fair to me he said if you be fair I'll be fair if you be forgiving I'll be forgiving whatever you give out I'll give it back to you I love being different I love being holy being set apart from the world I love being holy being different from those that decide to despitefully lose others I love being different because I can stand up to the wiles of the enemy I can lay my hands on myself and say whatever the doctors say say you gonna be sick no I'm not I'm gonna be healed the doctors say you need messages no I just need the word you need to be delivered and come to the house of God and allow him to let his word work down on the inside the Bible says that the word is like water it's nourishment to our body so if you need water and you're thirsting after God you come to the right place on today you can be filled if you're thirsting after him he said come to me I'll fill you up come to me I'll give you fresh living water that will flow down from the bottom of your belly flow out and it will be your blessing through your life my brothers and my sisters choose to be different don't choose to be like the world don't be the one who's always backbiting don't be the one who's always lying don't be the one who's being immature be the one who will stand up step out and do the will of God be the one who will be holy 
Be the one who be peculiar. Be the one that people can look at and say he or she is different. She's different. She's different. She's been with God. That's why she's different. She's been in his face. I don't want to just seek his hands. Because I don't want to be in a place where I'm just looking for him to do stuff. But I want sweet communion as I stand with him. I praise with him. I need him every day. I need him to love me. I need him to give me peace. I need him to give me joy. I need him to reside with me. I need him to fight my battles. I don't want to be in a place where God is not at. If you know what I'm talking about, give God a praise. If you need God in your life, give God a praise. Where there is his spirit is, there is liberty. But he dwells in the midst of our praises. If you need him this morning, give him a praise. If you need to feel him, give him a praise. Be different from those around you. I'm not going to come to church and just look at everyone else. I'm not coming to look cute. I didn't come to off work just to give you some sugar-coated message. But I came to feel God. I came to feel his power. I came to feel his anointing. I came to feel him. I need him. I need him. Too often huh, we come to the church huh, looking for huh, the candy coated message, huh, but today huh, we need him. Huh, today huh, we need him to destroy some yokes. Huh, today huh, we need deliverance. Huh, today huh, we need peace. Huh, today huh, we need to feel his love. I'm different. I'll be weird. But I'm different. I ain't afraid of the enemy. I ain't afraid. You got to walk in the authority that God gave you. You have to speak to those situations. Got too many powerless saints that decide to just sit by the wayside. No! Your troubles come so you can exercise your spiritual muscles. That weight you feel is to, to build your spiritual muscles. I was telling someone this week, I said the same God that you prayed to to help you get through school, help you finance all those loans, is the same God that can work out your situation you're in right now. <clears throat> He haven't changed. He still has all power. He's still omnipotent. Everything has to answer to him. But all too often, we get so stuck on what God used to do. We get so stuck on. And, and, and you know, you know them. The individuals you go to the gym they say, I'm going to the gym. Okay, what you going to do? I'm going to get on the treadmill. Man, you need to get off the treadmill and go find something else to do. Because now your body has developed a muscle memory to be able to get on that treadmill and you can get on there and walk a mile. No, let's do two miles, baby. You want to build that muscle, you got to push past the pain. You got to push past whatever obstacle is in front of you. If there's no pain, that statement is true. There is no gain. 
You cannot develop strength without tearing the muscle down and building it back up. Why you think God allows so much to come your way? Because he got to tear you down in order to build you back up. He not tearing you down to, to leave you there. He tearing you down so he can mold you and make you into what he wants you to be. We see these things up here, the, the, the little bike and the treadmill and the, the weights. But my brothers and sisters, you need to take evaluation and inventory of the weights and things that you're going through right now spiritually and understand that you know what? I don't have to do this alone because God is going to spot me. And once I get on that bench, I can just be able to push it up. And if I can't get it up, God will say, that's all right. I, I got it. And he'll throw it off of you. But too often, we'll get there. And we say it's too much. And you'll just wait for somebody to come by and lift it off. That's them individuals who, you, you know them. They'll call you every time they got a problem. Everything is a catastrophic emergency. Everything is life or death. No, my brothers and sisters, you need to grow up. You need to make sure this month of August, you don't miss a day of the Heavenly Health Club. Because there's going to be things that's going to be deposited in you about new spiritual nutrition, spiritual weightlifting, power development that you cannot afford to miss out on. If you don't have a church home, not doing an altar call just yet, but I'm about to. If you don't have a church home, I ask you just to give Christ Temple a year. Come here for a full year, not missing any service. And I promise you, the next first Sunday in August, your life will not be the same. Now I'm giving the altar call.